Hello, and welcome to a Let's Play of Heaven Will Be Mine. I have not played this at all. I played We Know the Devil to have a bit of context for it, and I just broadly know what to expect. I mean, Game X, some degree of factional stuff. But that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'm just gonna get into it. Also, I'll be reading out the dialogue as we go. Bear with me, because I make no claims about being good at voice acting or anything, but I will do my best to <laughs> distinguish between the characters. Ah, okay, so... We're picking some characters. So, I mean, Saturn, who is part of the Celestial Mechanics self-ship string of pearls. I'm assuming that's not the faction name. Yeah, yeah. So, faction is Celestial Mechanics, self-ship, string of pearls. I still don't quite know how to parse that part, but... Okay. Uh, a Celestial Mechanics is their test pilot. They want to advance humanity to its next stage, and Saturn wants to flirt. But there's no reason we can't do both. Combat style and bedroom style is button mashing. Okay, Pluto. From Cradle's Graces is self-ship Cron Macula. Cron Macula? Macula, probably. The ultimate weapon pilot. Even if Earth has given up on a new life for humanity in space, Cradle's Graces hasn't, and Pluto will make that dream come true. Like succulents, good girls, crushing, both kinds, everyone. Is trying oh is trying not to have is trying very hard not to have any dislikes. And then Terra, third one, is the Memorial Foundation. Their self ship Mare Chrysium. An ace pilot. Fighting for the pilots to join the rest of humanity back on Earth before it's too late. Good at sniping, espionage. Sniping, espionage, double crossing, ghosting, bad at loving herself, and everything else. I don't know, who do we want to go with first? I'm probably going to replay it through all the routes. I don't know if there's also, I don't know if there'll be a lot of back and forth to kind of see a bit of everything, or as much as I'd want anyway. Not necessarily 100 percenting But, uh, let's start with this... Let's start with this goth-ish sniper. From the Division of Existential, Existential Safety. Conflict enabled. Shilf, the ship self archetype model. First flight. July 16th, 1969. Place of manufacture. Sea of Crises, Earth's Moon, our hope for a throne of the soul, all the me for the Memorial Foundation International Space Program, and all humanity, until no one is forgotten and all are remembered. Registering Pilot Welcome, Pilot First Class Luna Terra. Error. Multiple maintenance issues and critical errors detected. Notice, launch permissions are locked until addressed. List errors. Maintenance errors. There is a possible sensor failure. Several limb connections are not registering. No weapons are loaded. Critical errors. Mass alert 1. Healing failure on critical area near core. Possible bleed. Mass alert 2. Tidal core is resonating at levels harmful to the pilot. Ready manual firmware update. Running. Upgrades detected. Syncing. Accepted manual internal mechanism firmware update. Switched ammunition to conceptual mode. Custom sensors loaded. Dynamic limb optimization loaded. 1981.1.7 underscore weapon underscore loaded drivers loaded. Details. Mass alert 1. I bleed 2. 
recording derived from the data burned four-dimensionally into the wound. Suffered by this unit almost one year ago. Wound self-generated by forced overloading tearing the core open during sustained conflict in the Mars Airs Regression Campaign. Ares special probably. Mars Ares Regression Campaign. All critical systems have naturally healed, yet the wound continues to bleed into space. Fuel efficiency lowered, healing speed reduced, and tidal reactor speed cannot be regulated, leading to possibility of overload and increased pilot strain. It is strongly recommended that you seek the assistance of a full maintenance team. A lack of understanding of the full effects of gravitational conflict on the human gestalt means that this computer cannot provide adequate instruction on therapeutic measures. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna keep going till this is over. <laughs> Permanently disable mass alert one. Okay, no, I do need to stop. So wait, I think these might be self ships in that the person the person themselves is the ship. That's not the style of mech I was thinking, but I like it. Um, I do really appreciate the computer saying, straight up, you just need therapy. I, this this is not a droid fixing problem. And then the person's response just being like, turn that off, thanks. Really ignore? Why? Provide reason. I can handle it. Automatic scan alerts show that this may not be a very good reason. Would you like to provide another? No. Mass alert 1. Disabled. Details. Mass alert 2. Tidal reactor has had unauthorized modification that is causing an unsustainable chain reaction. Notice, this ship is not equipped to handle prolong prolonged operation at this capacity. Notice, increasing short term output may cause long term failures. Notice, loss of gravitational stability may cause fracturing and instability in pilot. So, burn it, basically. Permanently disable mass alert 2. This mass alert cannot be disabled by pilot authorization. <laughs> I'm just reading that as a uh, motherfucking key code. Exclamation mark MF key code colon star 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 star. Alert disabled. For record keeping purposes, please input the reason. I'm fine. Ship self Mare Chrysium is in spacefaring condition. You are cleared to launch. Disable launcher OS and engage catapult. All controls given to pilot. There is a message for you. Cancel. Refused. This message will be automatically played. Europe. Letting you keep this is my gift to you, Lunaterra. Your favorite and loosest leash. Prove to me that you've learned not to choke on it. Incoming message. Standing orders updated. If it's that urgent, it's too late. If it's not too late, it can wait. Let me enjoy the view of the rings. They are beautiful, even though there's only so long you can watch them before the sight of the sixth planet's rings becomes as boring as a blue sky. Mare Chrysium sensors render them in every detail, using every sense as perfectly as she always has. You really are getting old, aren't you? Both me and you. It does seem like there's some division between the pilot and the ship more than I suggested before. <laughs> or, well, okay, as in, I should say, there's obviously, that's obviously a contested question <laughs> and not just straightforward thing. But that doesn't seem right. You're only supposed to get one body. Even if I haven't been very good to you, I could never throw you out. We're all we've got. 
The Mare Christian is the test type model. It was made as a proof of concept. It isn't the first space vessel made to grant humans locomotion and life in space, but it is the first to allow for outward expression. In all kinds of ways. It can do so many things, and they gave it devices for everything. Because they hadn't estimated how powerful tidal engines would become, or what sort of or what sorts of things human would really want to do in space. It's the first machine meant for conflict, but it's also the last machine that was meant for other things too. A ceremonial tin soldier, made to impress. An impossible to use machine, mind machine, or biofeedback interfacing is necessary to give humans control over a second body. But the Mare Chrysium is done completely manually. It makes Lunaterra sort of a genius and sort of an idiot that she can't do things any other way. I'm having so much fun. It's hard to believe it's going to be over so soon. No. I love it when old things are over, and new things begin. Open the channel. Let's hear those standing orders. It's January 1st, 1980, and the long and cold war, where humanity united against its nemesis, an existential threat from beyond the stars, has been over for a long time. Since the 50s, we have been fighting a war against an existential threat that we cannot understand, cannot perceive, and is powerless against the technology of Earth. That is a pretty stupid sort of war to fight, isn't it? When there's enough of a mess down here to worry about. Humanity is already the undisputed authority of reality, and we have the physics to prove it. It's time to return to Earth, our home, the seat of the universe. There's a symbol for Earth here. There's also the symbol for... I actually genuinely always forget this. Whether it's... No, wait. It's the inverted symbol for masculinity. For uh, femininity, I believe. I'll look this up when I'm finished reading this. Before Earth takes us back in pieces, let us go home with, uh, let's go home with grace. On the first anniversary of the decommissioning of the International Space Program, we, Memorial Foundation Native Sphere Existential Safety, in agreement with our home planet's unanimous decision, declare, there is no future for humanity in space. Let's come home. The return resolution, Memorial Foundation Native Sphere Existential Safety. I did look up that symbol, and it is a symbol for Earth, an astronomical one. It is also the upside-down version of the symbol for Venus. And the symbol for Venus is the same as the symbol for a woman. There's also some religious connotations to the Earth one. We'll see if that comes up later. It could be irrelevant or important. I'll circle back if that is the case. It's January 1st, 1981. It's been one year since we declared independence from Memorial Foundation and the rest of Earth. The Cold War is officially over, and it feels so light without their gravity weighing us down. But how, <laughs> how can a tiny handful of colonies, terraformers, and schools hold out against the full authority of Earth? Because that shit doesn't fly past escape velocity. To power the ship selves we made to fight the Cold War, we made tidal resonators to bring the gravity necessary for humans and culture to survive in space. And that gravity is ours now, enough to make a new world, free from the weight of Earth. If Memorial Foundation wants to kill the future, they have to come and take it from us. We're thankful for our cradle's graces, but we're not coming back. Independence Declaration. Cradle's graces. Okay, so at this point, this is divesting themselves from Earth and being like, you yeah, know, we're done. 
but that's Earth, the authority, the like bo governing body more than the planet itself. It's January 25th, 1981. Memorial Foundation and Cradle's Graces have been having fun for a little over a year, and nothing is breaking the stalemate. Earth is getting impatient. They have good reason to believe that the existential threat posed by a divided humanity in space is much greater than any theoretically malevolent entity outside the native sphere. While the kids are fighting, Earth is getting ready to list the humans remaining in space as part of the existential threat. And when they do, they'll send real weapons and end this war fought with plastic toys. Their justification? We are technically less than 100% human, just not human enough to be something else. It's hard to, it's hard to believe they're really onto us. It's time to make a drastic move. Bring our final piece, the prototype ship self string of pearls we made in the atmosphere of planet Cronus, which will never be sat in, to the lunar gravity well, where Memorial Foundation and Cradle's Graces are already headed. Whoever controls that place controls human access to space. We can be sure everything will be in place there. Earth or space, we are just short 100% human. So let's see how much less than 100% we can get. Internal report. Celestial mechanics. Oh. So this is the... Fuck Earth, let's remain wholly independent from them. Faction then. This is to destroy their access to space so they can't even bother us. And I mean, yeah, if you're going to class, if you're classifying people on percentage points of being human, then uh, fuck them entirely. Day one. Oh wow, there's a whole ass UI here. Okay. Uh... Retrograde in Retrograde Chasing after the string of pearls, Luna, Terra, and Pluto find each other instead. It's been almost a year since they last saw each other, and Luna, Terra has never seen Pluto like this. Are you ready to spin backwards? Joyride Killjoy Weaving in and out of the sixth planet's rings, Memorial Foundation's ace, Luna, Terra, plays cat and mouse with the renegade ship thief, Saturn. I'm guessing, is this me choosing which of these I want to go with? So basically, which of the other two characters I'm going to engage with first? Oh yeah, mission select, so yes, almost certainly. But first, I want to check what the other stuff says. Mail and alerts. Um, can I click? I assume I can click any of these. A justification for return. Origin. Memorial Foundation. Declaration of Intent. Author. Generation Emissary Halamede. Earth is not the sphere of our home planet. It is not the physical body, which is called Terra, the home of life. It is not measured in mass or by its gravity, its position in the universe. Earth is us. We measure Earth by culture. We are the Earth, humanity, the particles of its mass, and by our gravity, its body formed. By our diversity and multiplicity, Earth exists. The living miracle of humanity's shared power, insignificant unless we are joined. This international space program with representatives all across Earth represents our commitment to peace, that humanity will never seek again to destroy itself, that humanity has the right to eternal life, invincible bodies, and unrestricted movement in space. As humanity expands beyond this sphere, as extensions of the universal human rights of life, culture, and freedom. To protect the growth and sanctity of all culture, ensure a fate for humanity and the defeat of our enemy. On this day, we inaugurate the International Memorial Foundation Space Program. So this is a thing I'm going to have to try and keep straight. Is there a straight up simple way place this is laid out? I might check this alignment thing in a bit. Trying to keep straight the factions in my head, especially the names of the factions or groups, like there's things that aren't factions too. So the International Memorial Foundation Space Program, uh, the IMPSP. 
is basically uh, trying to preserve humanity as a notion to just live forever, extend in space, and just have no restrictions on the culture and freedom. All right. I have some questions about what that means, but broader, like their broader goals and what unrestricted freedom means in actual practice. Subject, Cold War Ace Reports, Luna Terra. Origin, first generation pilot research declassification. Author, Memorial Foundation Exi Existential Safety. She was unremarkable. I did not remember her at first. We took any of those who wanted badly to live in space and did not fit in on Earth. In retrospect, we were asking for a rather unique quality, and it is not just a coincidence that she was there. The pilots had to be young adults, pass a physical, and not care what space might do to their body. It is not so surprising that someone like her would emerge from that pool of people. But the woman you know today has been iterated on since she was an adolescent. Be assured, I saw nothing of promise in her when I first met her. I told her that myself, as I told all the students. I am uninterested in your potential. We are judged by the self we create. I find that encourages brats to not take their specialness too seriously. That was not Lunatera's problem. Piece by piece, she created someone very interesting to be. We gave those children permission, and Lunatera was simply unique in her execution. She was never encouraged. She was never punished. We will never find another prodigy like Lunatera by looking for tidally sensitive children, because they do not exist. We will not find them pre-made. They must create themselves. Was this not the dream of the Memorial Foundation space program? So, for anyone who's seen Gundam, this extremely just sounds like uh, new type shit, and Amuro in particular. <laughs> uh, okay. Lunatara, if I'm remembering right, is the character we're playing as. Let me. I'm gonna check some of this stuff to see if it says it anywhere. Okay, so. The Memorial Foundation, Celestial Mechanics, Cradles, Graces, these are the three factions. Anyway, and Memorial Foundation is the one we're reading about, which I do believe is the one we are aligned with. We go data log, there's nothing there yet. Um, comms might say. But, uh. Yeah, of course, we're playing Lunaterra because this is, these two options are saying who Lunaterra will meet. You're picking who you're going to meet. So we're, we're an ace who's really good at the psychic magic that attunes with our mech. Subject. Just come and get me. Origin. Combat communications packet. Author. An error. Oh, you think you're so special, don't you? Well, watch your back, because I'm coming for you. Think that number one position is going to last? Not a chance. In fact... Why don't we have a little duel about it, if you're not too scared? Come meet me in the shadow of Olympia Mons, and I'll make sure that this time you're the one left splattered and helpless and pinned on the side of the mountain, and not me, like the last nine times. Also, w would it kill you to, like, stick around for a bit after, you smug jerk? Not that I'm planning on losing, this time I'm going to beat you. So... Shadow of Olympia Mons, which is Jupiter, I think. Uh, yeah, neither of these tells me where they're going. Wait, no, well, weaving in and out of the planet's rings, chasing after the string of pearls. I think that might have been from Pluto. So, I'm, I'm getting a message from Command Europa, Director of Combat Operations, Memory Existential, Memory, bleh, Memorial Foundation Existential Society, <laughs> I'm sorry, 
Memorial Foundation Existential Safety, not your mom. So you really have betrayed us, haven't you? Uh, pilot first class, don't send me messages. I th can I reply here? I think I it seems like I can. I'm kind of curious. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> um, okay, five minutes ago I called this person. I called uh, I called her an Amaro, and I think I've got the wrong character from Gundam. <laughs> I've never betrayed anyone in my life. <laughs> well, good to know they have the same reaction as me. <laughs> ha ha but seriously whose side are you on right now uh it sounds so accusatory to put it like that you know i'm fine with you being on whoever side you choose so i can destroy them and drive you back to me that may end up hurting a lot of people. What? You don't think I'm up for it? Don't worry yourself about that part, kitten. If you want me to defect back, you could always ask. Oh, sweet girl, I'm not interested in you coming back so you can walk away again. Ha <laughs> ha. How many times did Halamid fall for that? It shouldn't count as tricking her if she knew it was coming every time. Oh, stop it. I hate when you're modest. It's so beneath you. Give her at least the dignity of a subtle seduction. I would have. That's not what she wanted. She really ought to think about her reputation more. And what more is there to say about the trail of messes you leave? But my disappointment in you both is total. My adorable failures. What am I to do with you? You should go easy on her. I left to spoil her. Make no mistake that everything she deserves will be visited on you. I wouldn't dream of not letting you have that. You have to know by now how aware I am of what you want and deserve. Ha <laughs> ha, you're so good to me, Europa. Oh, okay, I thought... I legit didn't think this person's name was Europa. I thought that was their location or something, but th that does make more sense. I don't deserve it. When I double-cross you again, be sure to really let me have it. I hope you do. But I take no chances with loyalty. Halamid merely hopes you will change. I think it's charming that even you believe that might have some effect on you, but I know, but I know much better than you, kitten. I won't let you return, no matter how much you beg, until you have no other choice. When you can't pivot or run or trick your way through, when you can't second guess or lie. That's the only way to change that nature of yours. Channel closed. So, I mean, between this conversation and the alignment system, it's pretty clear that you're choosing which faction you're going to side with. You're abandoning, or you're theoretically sticking with your home faction, but you're quite possibly abandoning it. So, presumably, then, this, this did confuse me when I thought Europa was their location, but this does seem to be someone from the Memorial Foundation, and basically is kind of going, yo, you could technically side with other factions, bear that in mind. But, uh, what's interesting to me is the idea that this happens a lot. 
There's a lot of double crossing. I don't know if that's going to be particular to this one character, or that's just uh, that's just the world. I can never be too sure who's gonna stick with who. So I do kind of want to go for this one and see if um, Pluto is the same person who said just come and get me. Oh wait, Halamid. So Halamid is the person they referenced as like effectively being tricked by uh, my current character, Lunaterra. Um, but it's not like Halamid is kind of, if not in charge, at least the one who is the like most central ideology of this faction. So a tr real true believer who is maybe. Uh, not quite willing to recognize that other people are not as much of a full-on believer as they might be. Okay, that's good to know. And then this is just great. My the faction. Wait, no. It's definitely not written by the faction. I feel like this might have been written by Europa. Because it's like, basically from the position of a mentor or trainer or Drill sergeant, I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, it's mission time. So I'm gonna go with this one. I don't know if this is going to lock us out of doing the other one or not. But we'll find out. <laughs> Delay. Uh, retrograde, in retrograde. Confirm? Launch. What's going on? You've been pestering me with orders. So what's the sudden holdup? Central said to launch immediately. We have we have to get to the Celestial Mechanics Lab, regardless of whether or not the prototype is already gone. There's valuable information there, but it's worthless if Cradle's Graces gets there first. Have some patience, Lunaterra. The Cradle's Grace's carrier just launched a completely unknown ship self. We're gonna have to talk about the word ship self. And this can't be right. A person can't pilot a ship that big. The tidal resonance should tear the pilot apart. Is this impossible? I hope. I've never seen anything like it. And no, you can't fight at Lunaterra, so don't even think about it. Any better ideas? It must be headed for where the prototype launched, right? Where else? Because they have to know that it already escaped. Don't underestimate your opponent, Lunaterra. Scavenging the lab may be useful anyway. We should have gone there for information, if nothing else. Even against an unknown and objectively stronger enemy? What makes you so sure, Lunaterra? No particular reason. Or a single particular reason? Ha <laughs> ha. Still don't trust me. Yep, yeah, oh, instructor. Don't insult your former instructor, Lunaterra. I knew how much to trust you before you betrayed us to Cradle's Graces. My opinion hasn't changed because we welcome my opinion hasn't changed because we welcomed you back into the fold. My best pilot and worst student. You've never been predictable except in your consistency for trouble. But it's a reliable metric. You're right, you know me. So if you're worried, don't have to let me have free reign like this. Since you were a kid from your earliest academy days, you've never been able to look me in the eyes and lie. You got away with saying you got away with <clears throat> excuse me. You only got away with anything by keeping your mouth shut. Very unlike Pluto, the hope of Cradle's graces. She could lie right to my face, 
with a smile, if she thought it was for the best. Oh, huh. Hmm. Are all of these people... Are, is Europa actually... Well, never mind. <laughs> I, I'll let the conversation play out, because I'll probably get more from the context. Pluto exceeded the wildest expectations of the pilot program, so much so that it was decommissioned in part because of her. If Celestial Mechanics have successfully built a monster that can withstand her, this engagement will end in disaster. And that is much more terrifying than this machine you're so eager to fight. That concerns me far more than you betraying us or fighting a battle you can't possibly win. I don't think any of you really understand wh understood what you were doing. Pluto is unreal. She's far more overwhelming than any of you understood. If that ship is unworthy of Pluto, it's going to be torn apart under the pressure of her, not the other way around. Pluto is the only real human being. No wonder she feels so alien when she looks at us. You want me to let you take an impossibly dangerous mission because you think you can save our enemy. <laughs> what can I say to that? Maybe she can teach you the lesson I can't. So there's some stuff in there. I think all of the pilots have been tra were trained under Europa potentially, or at least in the same program, same space. Like, maybe they have different mentor characters, but they're all from the same origin. And I wonder if then possibly Betrayal is just about the fact that none of these three factions represent Earth. Like, the sitting Earth government body or whatever. The government might not even be the word. So, I wonder is the notion that ev because everyone who went to space has just said actually we have different ideas about what the world should, what the universe should be, and fuck you. But they do seem to have also implied betraying um, the memorial group as well. So it's definitely not the idea that just everyone's betrayed Earth. There's still a little bit of shifting allegiances beyond that. But it also does sound like the whole title system they're talking about is probably going to be a common feature. It's not unique to this one pilot. Uh, and in fact, the implication is almost that this one pilot's not like the best at it. That instead Pluto is the kind of prodigy who broke the prodigy who broke the program so that they couldn't keep running it. At least not in the same way anymore. <laughs> anyway. Like waking up underwater to the wet burn of your lungs' desperation for air. Like floating untethered in space, unable to move under your own power. Losing the security of gravity is like being naked in space. Gravity is necessary for human life in space. Gravity is necessary for unrestricted movement in space. Can't have one without the other. The force that binds your existence together, the force to shape your <laughs> to shape foreign bodies, pure agency. Gravity is necessary, not just to live in space, but to be human in space. But being human is a little harder for Pluto, so she has to work for it. The tidal forces of her spacefaring body, the Kron Makula, are as strong as she believes, and as weak as she feels. And Lunaterra needs to make sure all the calculations are in order. Everything in her ship operates manually. She's just been at it long enough that it feels like a second skin. The jolt of nostalgia interrupts Lunaterra's mental math. She forgets to carry the one. It interrupts Pluto's focus, and she has a moment where she's not invincible. Close enough to touch the surface of the moon lab, Luna Terra is seen and known by Pluto, and they are suddenly falling down the well of too late and nothing you can do. 
I knew it. Warning, gravitational interference. It's important to get a grip. Knowing there's nothing you can do is something Pluto considers freeing, and Lunaterra considers exciting. Feeling doomed is clear permission to do whatever. As soon as the Mare Chrysium is through the cloud cover, she fires solid light into the remains of the Celestial Mechanics Lab and chases it through the wound. The lab was recently damaged by the illegal launch of a hijacked ship, but that damage is barely noticeable compared to the massive hole left by a much, much larger ship crashing through. Lunaterra acts fast under pressure. If there's no point in hiding, there's no point in stopping. It's true. Lunaterra is living on the whim of Krun Makula, which can probably <laughs> which can probably do whatever to her at any time. If she can't run away, she wants to make the first move. It's the sort of thing that makes a lot of sense if you think about it, and no sense at all if you think about it a little more. But that's Lunaterra, isn't it? She's betting you'll think too much, or not enough. Against Pluto? Is that really such a good idea? She's someone who always thinks just enough. Which makes it easy for Lunaterra to slip through, deep into the lab, until it gets quiet, except for the sounds of the moon quaking and trembling. After almost a year, the dread and the thrill is way too much to slow down and start talking. That's what the arrow flying into Pluto's gravity well is saying. Who will make the first move? Holy shit. Right, I'm just gonna watch this for a moment. <laughs> When Luna Terra punctures the last armor layer and opens up the terminal cavern, light spills out and screaming sound, because the Krun Makula is peeling the lab and most of the moon inside out with the forces of its own tides. It's not something that's impossible or anything, it's just something that's only possible in theory, which is still terrifying. More terrifying. And more terrifying than that power is Pluto's finesse. And more terrifying than the finesse is her gentleness, spooling matter like threads in the tiny galaxy of which she is the sun. Her power is very kind, but it's also a little perverse. What meaning does Mercy have from something that can core out a moon? Krun Makula's developers compared it to a black hole. They wanted a machine so powerful and absolute, even light couldn't escape it. Lunaterra understands now, that was wrong. She's the star, gushing and twinkling with matter and light, who wouldn't be swept up in that? The Mare Chrysium is so small, Pluto has never seen it from a perspective like Crown Makula's before. She never imagined it would look so fragile from here like a toy version of the fierce fighter she remembered. Got a little baby neck. Pluto's sense of scale is true. Lunaterra feels just like a plastic toy too. All right, now we've got Pluto. Hmm. Uh, I was trying to get a read on the character so I don't make a terrible voice that I'm stuck with. Come on, say something. It's making me sad. It really does fit you. So much more than I ever thought. Is it hard to look away? Being able to render you speechless is the power I've always dreamed of. What do you think? I know just a look won't change your mind. But I want you to tell me. Tell you what? That I regret betraying? I told you then that I always would. No, no. I won't let you do that, Lunati. Did you think I'd be mad? I mean, of course I'm mad at you. 
but not for anything you did to me. I would never be mad at you for not having enough faith in me to see through Cradle Grace's dream of a new home for humans in space. I'm just mad at you for not having enough faith in yourself to see it through and leaving all the work to me. Oops, I guess that is why I'm a little upset with you. Not mad, you know. Just disappointed. I can't believe I'm still the one scolding you like a kid. I'm trying to be the grown-up, you know? I did the responsible thing. I took the realistic option. I'm here to play the part of the boring adult. The grown-up villain. Oh, that's right. I remembered why, I'm ac why I actually am mad at you. You better not go down quietly. You better really believe what you just said. I'll, I'll forgive you if you left us for something stupid, but I'll never forgive you if you left us for something you don't believe in. And you better not believe in it, because I also won't forgive you. I also won't forgive you for fighting for a future that cruel. Sorry, stumbling so much. That doesn't leave me a lot of options. I don't think I can fight against that. Don't you dare. I won't forgive that either. Were you hoping, maybe, that it wouldn't have to be like this? That I wouldn't have to fight? It'll change you. In ways you don't understand. I've seen you fight so many times. I saw when you got that scar and when your poor ship got her wound. Has anyone else seen that side of you as much as me? I don't think so. Not even Europa. But it's different when you're on the other side. You think I don't really know you because I've never stared down the barrel of your rifle or felt that knife nick my ship. It's a different kind of knowing. Teach me then. Or I'll teach you. Huh. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, I mean, the slight problem here is I don't quite know what... Uh, oh, so sorry. I should read, I should read that and talk through it a little bit better. So Pluto learns a lesson, uh, or Lunaterra gets schooled, and whichever I pick basically will boost loyalty or affection or whatever for that faction. I don't entirely know what the Cradle's Grace's deal is yet. I kind of have vague illusions, like we read the opening letter stuff, but I feel like I know a lot more what the Memorial Foundation's deal is. For now, I think that makes sense, and then I'll hear more of it as we go. I'm kind of curious. Are there like distinct endings for each character for each faction? Because that would be nine whole endings at least. Kind of, that's assuming there isn't additional other ones. Um, because I'll not necessarily 100%, but I'll definitely be interested in kind of feeling out a lot of the different paths of this game. Memorial Foundation and Man. Oh, <laughs> well, I didn't get to read that fully. Um, yeah, no, I was just curious if I'd... Yeah, it doesn't matter. I thought the logs might say what it said. What's it gonna be, Luna T? Oh, right. You never want to make the first move. Then I can go. Pluto sweeps up the swirling, tumbling matter in the hollowed out moon. Making the second move has always worked for Luna Terra. She's never been good at setting the pace, only outsmarting it, so it's the only move to make. Even still, maybe there aren't any winning moves. Lunaterra has to be ready for that possibility. The Kronmukula is a very impossible sort of machine, almost as impossible as Pluto. Kronmukula can grant space-time to a crawl with its tidal forces. Kronmukula can pull ambient matter into a whirl with enough friction for the combustion to give birth to a star. Emotionally, 
and almost as much physically. A tiny sun. Ooh, sorry, I peeked there. A tiny sun is born, but Lunaterra has just gotten out of the way. Lunaterra isn't where Pluto is expecting, and then there's suddenly a hail of bullets in her skull. Pluto doesn't mind the onslaught, but it's still shocking, but not in an unpleasant way. It's actually very joyful. Really, really, you're not just trying to scare me. For real, not a joke, we're finally going to have a fight about it. Is this body so me that you finally aren't going to be weird about fighting it? Lunaterra thinks Pluto could use a lesson in how terrifying actual combat can be, but is there anyone terrifying enough to teach it to her? Are you trying to hide from me? I've been waiting for a real fight. I'm tired of you telling me you think I'm right. If you really thought that, you'd be here, on my side. So prove me I'm wrong already. Or admit defeat. Bullets through her arm and chest pretty much everywhere. That is not a problem. Tear the bullets, even if they're light, redirect them with gravity, pull them into a cosmic whirl. They will never even reach her. They will always be approaching, never meeting. They will be an infinite whirl. And that whirl will become a star, watching the mare Chrysium in heat and light and radiation. Ah, that's more like it. Not fast enough, Pluto. And then she runs Pluto through. It's not enough, but it hurts. It's serious. That brittle sphere is of a spear is of a cold and irrational metal that repels cosmic concepts. Thank God. I was beginning to worry you didn't care about anything anymore. So here. The star supernovas. Kron Makula holds the star, and Kron Makula is the star. Lunaterra almost doesn't get out of it. Her engines overheat, the electromagnetic current shorts her sensors, and her chassis is fried. But she can move more than Pluto can, at least for long enough to get away. But I'm still ahead of you. Now I know why everyone hates you so much. You're no fun to fight at you're no fun to fight with at all. Haha, <laughs> are you kidding? Like you fight fair. Now that I know what you're really like, I'm not going to accept anything less. I don't want to do that again. Well, too bad. Whose fault is that? Yeah. I know. Day two. Twelve percent. I am going to take as an indication that there's about seven more days worth of stuff. Maybe not necessarily true, but that's my current benchmark. <clears throat> oh. So let's check my mail. Uh, oh, I read those in the wrong order, I guess, before. Which makes sense. I read it like it was a real inbox, so I was like, I'll start with the oldest at the bottom. Subject. First generation pilot candidate interviews. Origin. Leaked data packets. Author. Space program intake archives. Why do you want to go to space? I want a new start. This is LT Lunaterra. In what sense? To get rid of this weight. We are required to make it clear that the purpose of the program is not to leave Earth, but to expand it. The weight will follow you. But will it weigh differently? Please explain what you mean about what you said previously. About what? What do you mean when you say you don't want to be me? I don't know how else to say it, isn't it obvious? Who would want to be this? I don't understand what you see that is wrong with you. I do. Aha! Uh -huh. Are you saying that you, as you are, the person who you are, d 
doesn't want to be you. Yes. Then you aren't that person. But that person weighs on me. So you would like to have the weight of being this other person that you are not? You would like that removed? Yes, please. That may be possible. Subject. Pilot Program Progress. Origin. Memorial Foundation Executive Committee Annual Report. Author. Training Director, Europa. The Cold War is looking bleak. The threat from space is more flimsy, translucent, and inscrutable, when once it was so strong that all of humanity feared it. Existential threats on Earth are more pernicious than ever, and the scouts are not keeping up. It has become difficult to argue against the possibility that the scouting program has done more harm than good, and that goes just as much, if not more so, for the pilot program. Historically, death has always invited the enemy here in its greatest strength. Humans can't resist killing each other long enough to protect themselves from the existential threat. It is easy to make this argument, but we have had little success with it. No matter how celebrated the slogan is, and no matter how many governments and leaders profess to live by it, the simple fact remains, the existential threat can never be as powerful as we are. Humans will always pose a greater threat to other humans than the existential threats will. It will always be easier for humanity to eliminate the threat by killing their own than by fighting the threat directly. While we have offered children and the unwanted to fight the existential threat with existential intent, humanity has turned its gaze inward, rather than to the heavens. Not even strong enough to pierce the atmosphere without burning, the existential threat can no longer be labeled as such. For these reasons, we accept the decision to decommission the Memorial Foundation space program. So I'm curious about the existential threat in particular and how that develops, because it's simultaneously talked about as the problem that everyone should be facing instead of having these interfactional conflicts, but it's also portrayed as not that big a deal, but that might be only when humanity is united against it and not... It, it might be perfectly calibrated to be something that a third of humanity, i.e. one faction, one of the three factions, couldn't handle on their own, but that if everyone banded together, would be utterly defeatable. And it's similar to kind of climate change style analogies. It's a semi-intangible threat that's easy to overlook, easy to feel like it's not a concern. It's easy to feel like it's not a concern because it's not directly killing people. It is a threat on a like abstract and large scale. back at it again with Europa. Excited to be out in the field again, doing important work. We're a long way from anything important out here, I can't help but notice. You think Command wants you as far away from them as they can get you? What makes you think that? That you said it? That Command is my ex? And that I did once double cross Memorial Foundation? So, uh, I forget the exact name, but the ideologue I was talking about before is Lunatara's X. Okay, so probably I should read Annie Double Cross as like <laughs> also a romantic complication. In that case, you should be happy you're in the field at all and not in a brig or in the process of being shipped back to Earth. Well, I am. I'm so thankful. I don't need to be lied to about my work being important. Oh, I would never lie about a thing like that. In fact, one of the most lovely sixth planet... 
In fact, the most lovely sixth planet of our solar system, Cronus, has become extremely busy in the past 24 hours. This is the part where I go, oh, so we're not in the Milky Way. <laughs> or we're in something where it's the Milky Way, but slightly changed, renamed, rebranded. A major leak out of celestial mechanics has revealed that they're finishing a prototype here, and Cradle's Graces know about knows about <clears throat> and Cradle's Graces knows about it too. Apparently the Hellion responsible for the leak has stolen it too. You're just the woman for the job. Grading in incorrigible pilots is your specialty. Let's see if that power can be used for good. For once. Europa, please leave some of me left to fight the enemy. Don't shoot me down before the mission starts. Was I too mean? I would prefer direct combat any day. Well, let me tell you something nice then. That Cradle's Grace's super weapon, your favorite, has been spotted in the system. My favorite, what do you mean? Don't play dumb. You make that same face whenever Kron Makula is spotted. It's the biggest mystery of their side, and one of the only reasons Cradle's Graces hasn't collapsed by now. The Kron Makula's power is unreal. It is far stronger in reality than anything that could possibly have been projected from its original schematics. Its capabilities seem endless and impossible to predict or counter. And no one knows who the pilot is. The list of people who could pilot something like that is very short. However, maybe it's someone you know? Worried I might double cross you again. I'm not with Cradle's Graces anymore for a reason. Oh, then I trust you. No, <laughs> sorry. Oh, I just never trust you when girls are involved. Channel closed. Um. So. The Kurt Makula, which is what we just fought, they don't know who the pilot is. When we obviously 100% do. That's kind of curious, too. Especially when it's not just, oh, we don't know who the pilot is, but it's actually like a big mystery. Oh, I was trying to come back. Okay, can I? Okay, yeah. Comms and mission. Oh, I guess. I was like, why? it's weird that you can't go any further, go to any other stuff, but I was like, I guess the rest of the stuff is just emails. All the kind of prologue stuff doesn't come back, which is a shame, because I probably would have skimmed over that to try and get a better sense of the um, the factions from that, and like how they might have split and separated themselves. Anyway, I was just curious what the data logs would look like. So, our mission select... Oh, okay, so we do both missions. This is not a... At least for now, this is not a choose your path kind of moment. It's just choose the order. And that's going to do it for this first episode. Next time we'll continue with day two and meet the third of the trio. If you've been enjoying this game, please consider supporting the creator, which you can do either by buying this game, even if you don't intend to play it after watching, or some of their other games. They have multiple other visual novels and similar styles. I'll link to various places you can buy them in the description of this video, but I'm pretty sure if you buy from Itch.io, they get the best cut of the sale. But until next time, thank you for watching.